Now, the Attorney General of the Federation, Mr. Bubaka Malami, says that there are not many options before the federal government in connection with the Process and Industrial Developments Limited, PNID, case. According to him, the case should have been appealed by lawyers engaged by the immediate past administration of President Goodluck Jonathan. The Attorney General says that President Muhammadu Buhari-led administration had, at a point, considered engaging PNID in negotiations despite doubt about the contract's authenticity. Mr Malami also says the Buhari-led administration could not do much since an award had been established since the beginning of the administration. The British court had awarded a judgment of $9.6 billion against Nigeria over claims that the country did not meet its own obligation of a 20-year gas supply and processing agreement. And the convener of the annual University of Marriage Conference, Mrs. Folorosho Alakija, is asking couples not to allow financial disputes to create rifts in their unions. At the fourth edition of the conference, which held in Lagos, several speakers spoke on the theme, My Money or Our Money, and how couples can maintain balance in their homes regardless of their financial standings. A question which points to financial intimacy in marriages is captured in a drama sketch to open the 2019 University of Marriage Conference. That shopping that I did last month, I need to finish it. The convener, Mrs. Folorin Shalakija, happily married for about 43 years now, is passionate about building homes and marriages and shares her success tip as adopting the Bible perspective on marriage and finances. This year, we are uh, going to be talking about my money or our money, or is it God's money? Despite the fact that you are just a custodian, yet couples are still fighting over money. It doesn't belong to you. You're a custodian, you're supposed to manage it properly. Are we really managing what God gave us to help him to manage, to give us comfort in our homes so that we can live, work, and enjoy ourselves according to his will for our lives. God is good and is amazing. The guest speakers come in pairs. First, Pastors Kingsley and Mildred Okonkwo. Pastor Kingsley lists the disadvantages of wives taking it for granted that their husbands ought to provide for the family. There's nowhere in the Bible it says the man should provide. And this is what makes many women a bit disadvantaged in marriage because they enter with the mindset that somebody is supposed to take care of me. You see, when you come with that mindset and a man acquires you, because in his mind he's taking care of you, so the same way he buys furniture, he puts you in the house in the furniture as if he has acquired you, and he expects you to be his servant. Mrs. Okonkwo totally agrees with her husband, but has other tips to share. So I think that with planning, proper conversations, and a lot of communication, you can really overcome any um, financial Issues. Next are uh, pastors Godman and Bolariwa Akilabi. You have to be very deliberate about building a strong relationship, a friendship, before this issue of money will ride well. Because marriage is about seasons. There are seasons when I will look like the more buoyant and the more prosperous one, and there are seasons when he will look like the more buoyant and more prosperous one. But if that central vision that we've sat together to craft and to put down on paper is in place, it keeps us stable, it keeps us steady. We can do better for Pastor Godman and Pastor Godman. The next University of Marriage Conference is scheduled for September the 12th, 2020. The Kaduna State Government has commenced the process of settling nomadic herdsmen where they will adequately rear their animals as a business venture rather than move from place to place. This follows the signing of an agreement between the State Government and the Republic of Denmark to establish a local dairy farm for about 1,000 nomadic herdsmen at Hokato Ranch in Kubao, local government area of the state. According to Governor Nasser El Rafai, the project will solve the political, economic and security problems posed by the incessant conflict between farmers and herders across the country. 
Presently in Nigeria, the domestic dairy industry supplies less than 10% of the country's current demand, leaving a huge gap that is filled by importation. Apart from security and economic problems posed by itinerant herdsmen across the country, most Nigerian dairy farmers contribute little to the local dairy value chain. The signing of a memorandum of understanding between the Kaduna State Government and Denmark on the development of a local dairy value chain is about settling nomadic herdsmen into being farmers and creating a business model around it. The new public-private partnership is expected to develop a long-term sustainable dairy industry and local dairy sector by settling at least 1,000 small-scale herders and their families in one place and increasing their dairy output. Once you can create a business model around, around settling the herdsmen and increasing the dairy outputs of the cows that they are herdering uh, and now will be in a, in a farm setting, um, it becomes a business model. And for that reason, it's sustainable because everyone is is uh, interested in in uh, in developing it uh, further. Aside the fact that investments in this sector will help create wealth and more jobs for the citizens, it also has a potential to resolve a serious national security problem created by incessant conflicts between herders and farmers. Our hope is that what we've started with ALA, leading to the development of the grazing reserve in Kubao, local government that we want to develop jointly with them, will show a proof of concept, will show the itinerant nomadic herdsmen that it is possible to engage in modern livestock production without having to go up and down the country. Some players in the agro-allied business are excited about the development. We can stay in one place, we benefit more. We have more meat, we have more settlement, we will not have more problems. Under the public-private partnership, the Kaduna State Government is offering 1,000 nomadic dairy farmers permanent farmlands with access to water, education and other basic amenities. Elsewhere in Kano, the state government says it is committing over 2 billion naira annually on the implementation of its free and compulsory education across the state. The state governor who gave the assurance in Kano says funds have already been earmarked for the exercise, which is expected to go up 200 million naira every month. Our correspondent Idris Jibrin reports. Governor Abdullahi Ganduji arrives Sana Abache Indo Stadium in company of the state head of service, executive secretary of the state senior secondary school management, his counterpart at the state universal basic education and some traditional rulers from Bichi, Ranu, Arai and Gaya. This event, according to the state governor, is to reiterate the commitment of government towards free and compulsory education and ICT appreciation for stakeholders in the state education sector. Focusing on providing educational opportunities to all children in the state. Without child education, especially for the poor, the Kano State Head of Service highlights what participants stand to benefit from the exercise. From today, uh, running costs at, and at a rate that has been determined by government. This, Your Excellency, I believe, will be reviewed from time to time. For the program to achieve its desired objective, the state governor believes consistency, determination, and hard work are the key requirements that must be brought to bear by participants. In all, 1,180 schools with total population of about 800,000 will benefit from the state's direct funding strategy, while 52 Sangaya Almajiri schools were also selected as pilots for the program. Idris Jubrin, Channels Television News. And now to the arts. For every first timer in any occupation, there is bound to be some jitters. If contemporary artist Tai Erewale experienced this at her first solo exhibition, she certainly did not let it show. 
Our tribute tonight celebrates the creativity of Taiwo Erewele. The words of the best-selling author, Austin Kleon, are amongst the things this contemporary artist has armed herself with as part of the inspiration for this solo exhibition. Besides the fact that a lot of things run through her mind and the only way she can find expression is through her art. I titled my exhibition, You Haven't Seen It All, because it actually happens to be my very first solo. In the past, I have had um, struggles with myself. I'd been very um, used to working in a monotonous style against my wish because I was, you know, I was too glued to the academic kind of art where you're looking for representational art, you're looking for resemblance and, and, and all of that. And so I had, you know, a, an urge to break away, to, you know, release myself, my true genius, and express myself as the painter I, I truly am. And that is what birthed this show, which she calls You Haven't Seen Nothing Yet. Taye Erewele explains the concept. I think um, it's colors that make life worth living. For example, if you, if you were living in a room that didn't have any light, you wouldn't appreciate, for example, the color of the fabric you yourself is wearing, or your furniture, or even the television set, because there'll be no light to power it. I think um, life experiences, you know, God guarded my thoughts as at when I was producing these colors. For her, painting compares to a childlike adventure, one that she has embarked on, and the ride has been a delightsome one. We see it in pieces such as To Be or Not, Twilight, Be Throated, some of these issues that affect her gender. That piece behind, titled My Fairy Passion, just talks about how passionate my journey has been. I actually um, have a very interesting story. Before I became an artist, I had meddled into two other um, courses. I, at a point in my, in my life, I studied geography and regional planning. At some point, again, I studied estate, um, estate management. But then there was this void in me that I needed to fill. And so, you know, I, I started on, on that course of, of self-discovery. This work just tells you that I'm very passionate about what I do. Taye Erewele is a graduate of the Ambrose Ali University in Edo State. She has held over 15 group exhibitions and her subjects are usually gender related. 